Uh, welcome to the Porn Stars Are People podcast. My name is Dan Frigolet, your host. I am here with Freak Show. Uh, so that's that's freaking master. Thank you guys for having me. No, thanks for having us. Um, we're we're at. Uh, I like that you guys speak completely in unison. That's fun. Um, <laughs> we're here in, in Edison, New Jersey, uh, which is I don't know how much you know about New Jersey. This is not what the rest of New Jersey is like. I feel like this is what when people say like nasty things about New Jersey, I think they're talking about Edison. Like yeah, this no, represents I that. I really don't know much. Just I feel like Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> um, I noticed a lot of cheesecake and a coffee. Yeah, know? yeah. So <laughs> basically, we're in uh, we're in the section of New Jersey where they just do conventions. So it's all hotels, all parking lots, and all shitty diners. Oh, nice. So I'm just saying, give this state a chance. This is not <laughs> this is not what the representation of the thing is. But uh, so okay, so have you guys been to exotic? This is my first exotic. Have you guys been to this before? No, this is our first exotica. Very We've cool. We've never really been to a big convention like this. The only thing. Uh, we went to Expos CamCon. Okay. A much smaller scale. Okay. But so, what? Uh, what's your takeaway on this thing? You've you've been to, to like half of a day of of what I kind of viewed as like pure chaos. Oh, it was <laughs> total <laughs> chaos. Oh I couldn't imagine like going as a fan. Um, it's it's better. I feel like as a model, but going as a fan, I feel like I'd be overwhelmed. Yeah. And scared. And want to punch a bunch of people. It's and it's a nerve wracking thing because even me, who's interviewed, I want to say I've either interviewed or interacted with probably fifty percent of the people that are there, and even me. And so, so I've met some of these people, emailed with, with with a bunch of them. So even me walking down the aisles was just the way they have it set up. Is there was it was even people that have done podcasts with us. I was like nervous to like say hi. I was like, uh, hey, uh, uh, oh, oh yeah. It was weird. and I was like, do I buy a picture? Like it, it is a weird kind of a setup um you know but i've never been anything like this so i don't know so i you know I'm, i i lean to the shy end of the spectrum anyway one-on-one -on -one for me is like way harder than addressing a room of people so um i think that that plays into it but so i don't know i don't the people that come to these i think they get it all figured out oh um, i mean like the people who like work there a lot of them yeah like they know what they're doing they're on top of it but like yeah for us even we do live webcaming and yeah so we're not we're in a room by ourselves right so, right like, you're saying like the the shy aspect is a lot different like going yeah, to yeah. like this <laughs> well even i think even the fans because I, I kept seeing like dudes come up and like they go to like their favorite one and then they like they they like pick them up and they're doing this pose and i was like i can never do that that's crazy <laughs> that's oh, I get so shy around like all oh, women I think are hot. It's yeah. Like, yeah. So, like I couldn't imagine. Yeah. I saw some dude like grabbing a girl's ass. So I'm like, I wish I had those kind of balls. <laughs> 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 yeah. I feel like I don't even and I don't know. Actually, I don't know how this relates to me as a person, but I don't even like if I'm in a relationship, I don't even like doing that kind of stuff in public. Like I'm very anti PDA. To the point where, like, you know, I, I almost sometimes would make, like, my my, uh, my past girlfriends uncomfortable because I'm not <laughs> interested in, in, like, being all mushy. Because there's, there's, like, there's people around. Right. Like, this is not, this is not, the, this is not the venue for this. It's, it's a weird thing. <laughs> See, like, uh, I don't feel, like, the PDA in public isn't a problem for us. I mean, we've done, like, public sex. <laughs> right. Walking right. Right. leash in public. But, <laughs> right. like... When you get all lovey-dovey, like the sweet stuff, yeah. that's where I feel like You can spank me, but don't you kiss me on the mouth. Yeah. There's people here. That's funny. That's funny. So uh, I, I, spent, I spent a fair amount of time so, uh, talking about relationships on this podcast, so I, I've, I've tried to skirt away for a little bit. But it's an interesting uh, perspective to have the two of you here uh, together so that we could talk about it as a team. What do you... I talk a lot in my stand-up about how right now in this world it's hard to like figure out how to make a relationship work. All of the circumstances by which to make traditionally a marriage work uh, kind of don't exist anymore, right? So what do you guys what do you guys think is the key to this whole thing? You guys are together for a period of time uh, and it's working. <laughs> Why? So we've been together nine years. Yeah. Um, he actually met me when I was 18 and he was 35. Yeah. So we really didn't think it was going to work. First <laughs> of all. Oh, I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I don't know, like the biggest thing for us, and I know this is so cliche, but communication, we talk all the time. We talk about everything. We're with each other 24 seven pretty yeah. much. I don't think that's cliche. Home. I think most people don't communicate. 
actually, you're right. Nowadays, everyone is on their fucking phone. Yeah. And I, it's so different. I've noticed just being like, even on Snapchat, like the way guys try to hit on you. Even I feel is different from when I was younger, and I'm just <laughs> like, does this work ever? <laughs> no, this is what I learned about dudes, and this is this is this is true, and this will be true forever. Guys, we only we come up with like one ish move, one or two ish moves, <laughs> and we just repeat that motherfucker forever. <laughs> and and the people that we're with. It worked for that person, and that's it. Our move is the same for throughout time, and it's just when we don't get a girl, it's because the move's no good. But the, there's 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 one girl in a hundred where the the move's gonna work. <laughs> well, and it actually when, uh, funny because when we were kids, me and my friends, yeah. um, we decided to go out at the bar one night and just just ask, "Hey, you want to fuck?" Yeah. And that was the one move. It was the one move. Maybe took like 26, 27 <laughs> times. Yeah, it but it worked. <laughs> it's only got to work once, ladies. That's we know that it's only got to work the one time. We'll put it. We'll put in the time. We'll put in the effort. We'll make the phone calls. You know, I'll make 100 calls a day. No. OK, no problem. You want to fuck now? OK, no problem. What the fuck no. There's one coming. There's one coming around the corner. There was a sales guy I used to work with, and he's like, every time somebody gets, says a no to me on the phone, I get so excited because I know I'm one closer to a yes, <laughs> which is a crazy mentality, but that's how those sales guys get, hey, you know? That's a really good look on life, though. <laughs> right. I mean... There's a yes coming around the corner, baby. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's weird. So I, I, I don't – yeah, I don't think people communicate. I think, I think that – and. It, at some points in time, that was the thing that made a relationship work, like like for my grandparents, right? Like my grandparents, they were in a, a completely different society, right? They, they met in the 50s, uh, and they, they were heavy into gender roles. Religion was huge. And so their position in this relationship was grandpa woke up early in the morning, went to work, came home. Uh, grandma had dinner, the kids, the whole thing. They probably interacted 15 minutes a day. And right, didn't Max. Sleep in the same bed either. Right, they they <laughs> did. Well, they slept in the same bed, but they slept they, they slept probably tucked into different sections of the bed, right? And so my grandparents in sixty five years, all they had to do was hang out maybe a total of like five hours over sixty five years. Like that's an easy thing to do. Whereas you know, you guys, I mean, you're in each other's faces all the time, so you have to be able to communicate. Yeah. You have to be able to maybe say to each other, hey, listen, I don't, I need some time. I need right. some time to not look at you today, <laughs> which I think is healthy. Well, and I feel, too, like, okay, the communication and, like, sex. I mean, that's really important to both of us. Yeah. We're both very sexual people. So, like, being able to not only express in real life things, but express what we want in the bedroom. Yeah. And I think that's really hard for people. Sure. To say, oh, don't do that, or this is how you should do it. Like, they feel embarrassed or don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. But if you're not into it. It's not going to last either. If you're not, you know, enjoying yourself, I don't feel like that. Yeah, that's you. Work. Well, that, and that's what I think porn is accessing and maybe making worse, especially now because of all the things that you can, you know, you can get customs, you can find the little fetish that you're into, you can find all the little niches. So you can live your entire life having sex that you don't believe in <laughs> and go find the stuff that you're really into while the door's locked in the bathroom on the internet. And it's like, and, and so it's it's put people in a position where they don't even have to ask for the thing with their partner. They don't have to find a partner who matches up with them in that way. They can just go get it on the internet and then go give the mediocre sex that they think their partner wants. Right. So I... I it's it's a weird industry now that the, the more that I that I chip into, I'm, I'm by no means in this industry but the more i chip into it, it it's interesting because you guys were showing me yesterday the the virtual reality porn <laughs> like it's getting to this crazy level where porn might be better than sex right yeah oh. we were actually talking about i know like uh nikki knight was talking about her big thing is next thing that is coming is smell vision yeah like that will be they've been talking about that for a long deal. time yeah <laughs> <laughs> what's funny is i walked into and i said this on, on one of the other podcasts but i walked into doral beach as one of these like high priced uh, um like golf club you know uh, for rich people thing my cousins are rich people and uh <laughs> and rich he, he's people. a rich people and he brought me there 
And we walked into the spa, and I and I walked in. I was like, "Oh, it smells amazing!" I don't know why it smells amazing in here. And I just and I, I my smell's gotten great in the last couple of years. And I started like kind of identifying smells, and I was like, "It smells a little bit like jasmine and a little bit like pussy." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I think this is the perfect set of smells for somebody to be comfortable, <laughs> men and women." You know, it's like a it's like a weird psycho a psychological thing. So the smell of vision, yeah, I don't know. It, it, that will be interesting. I wonder. I wonder if someone will lose their job. Uh, I wonder if there's somebody who looks great on camera but smells awful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a fetish for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sti sti oh. is stinky sex is a fetish. Yes. Wow. Farts. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Yeah. It's like uh, every time we I I delve a little bit deeper, I find out there's some stuff I shouldn't I shouldn't yeah. know about. Oh, yeah. It is. It's a tough. It, and I. I don't know. I think this is a dude thing. But as a man. Uh, what I've found over my life is that is that my my tastes keep I don't, I'll say evolving because I want to sound <laughs> sophisticated, but all that's happening is the 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 level of 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 thing that I need to see to get me off is is getting um, more drastic. Yeah, yeah there's a and it makes me nervous. Of, of American Dad, and okay. Stan is very you know modest. He's mm -hmm. like you're saying the '50s husband. That's right. How he right. believes things right. should be, and um, his wife wants to be spanked, and he just thinks it's oh, this is against God. This right. is not right. natural. So finally, he like tries some kink stuff. And he tries everything, <laughs> like just goes insane. So I think you're right sometimes, like because it's all at our fingertips. You yeah. can look for literally anything and find it. That sometimes it's like, yeah, this normal shit just isn't doing it. Yeah, I, I, I fear, I, and I fear it's a dude thing where I think, I think if you, if you like watch something that's outside of your realm and then you enjoy it and then you come to that thing it kind of gets like stored in there it's like you know what you know an avatar <laughs> when the tails yeah. connect and they're like we're linked for life or whatever <laughs> bond or whatever they call it i think that's what happens when you come you like bond into like the the pee porn that you just watched or whatever and you can't go backwards now you can only go forwards to the point where you're like hanging from the ceiling <laughs> from like the hooks oh. I don't know, what do they call that what do they what do they call that um hanging from the hook the sp suspension what do they call yeah, that i'm not really <laughs> Something like something crazy, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what uh, if people subscribe to you guys and whatnot? What are they? What are they seeing? What are they buying into? What are you guys? Give me a little elevator pitch for what you guys like to bring to the, <laughs> to your audience. Okay, so <laughs> I would say like our main uh, focal point of what we enjoy is like more BDSM. Yeah, and I mean I I say we're like medium bdsm because so, i've seen some really like sure so the, yeah so so start from the beginning it's like let's let's imagine you're an uneducated listener and you okay. just hear that and you just lump in your head you just you, now you're just seeing uh leather masks zip <laughs> zipped mouths like that you know what i mean so just like tiptoe us into that world what you know like wh what where's the where's like the threshold okay. of bdsm well i don't have a gimp mask but i am <laughs> interested in getting one of the dog ones okay <laughs> well okay so i guess to just to start our first date consisted of a um, master walking me on a leash okay so let's just start there yeah um now let me ask you this now this is this this might be silly this might be a silly comedian question uh just because now it's in my head so <laughs> I have a dog, and I won't put her on a leash that that comes from her neck. It's a harness, like a backpack right. harness on her thing. Has has the BDS world, uh, BDSM world evolved to the point where your where your leash is like strapped to your back and not to your neck? Uh, no. It's like old school. No. It's like seventies. I actually got you know the training collars with the spike. <laughs> okay. That was my first collar. Okay. So <laughs> I don't normally wear it on the inside, but I yeah. Have. So, so no, like I pr I like to be choked. So that's yeah. Like a you know, no, even a, a, most of the time when I come, he will choke me yep. before I come. So, like, that's something, I guess, too. So, I like the <laughs> neck thing. So, so like always harness, on the neck. Right. Yeah. The harness would be cool, like, I would say more for, you were talking about the suspension. Yeah, sh for sure. That would, yeah. that would work for that. Okay, so, so. dog leash, you dog leash walk. This is <laughs> public or private, then? That, that, was, that was in public. Okay. We were out in public. And uh, for the most part, we were just trying to see what the public, what kind of reaction we would have. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. 
It was like your own. It was your own game against the world, kind right, of. Right, kind of. Yeah, it wasn't really like a fetish at that yeah. time. Yeah. At least maybe not for me. But yeah. yeah. No, not at first. Yeah. yeah. Kind of turned into that. Yeah. Oh, cool. That That's led to like public stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> I told you. It's a, yeah. It's the it's the it, you tiptoe into the world and you're like you know what nobody cares we may as well <laughs> right. step it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Okay, so uh, so the, so so what you still we're still yeah I guess I still have a lot of questions about what it takes to like how do I know that I've entered the BDSM realm? I mean, I guess that's like a that's a really big area because it can be anything. Like, I guess another one of the things. So I what are really all what like... are all what are all of the letters the in the BDSM? I guess I guess even let's just even start there. I got all I really know is a sadist masochist. <laughs> okay, like, right. I That's what I mean. I have a, I have a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> domination. Bondage, maybe? domination. Yeah. Uh, sadist. Sadist. Masochism. masochism. And so, and what? And so, what are those? What are those two things separately? The mac- masochism is. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know the like <laughs> Actually, lingo. I just know I like to be <laughs> choked with leather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, masochism. Masochism, I think, is more of the role play area. Or, like, how the, the dominant feels about it, yeah. I think, has something to do with it. Like, whether they're doing it because they like to watch the person in pain or yeah. something to do with that. I, do f- I find it interesting that everybody in, in this game, in, in, the, in the adult industry, uh, does. Ha- they, I think they do have a better understanding of communication, sexual communication, and what people like and, and the power structure of what they're into sexually, which I think a lot of street people are not as aware of. You know, I just know that uh, with a civilian person, uh, I'm I'm going to try to choke her and see kind of what happens. <laughs> right. You know what right. I mean? Like, I'm going to I'm going to tiptoe <laughs> into some stuff and she's going to hopefully let me know whether or not she's into it. You know, if if I put a little pressure and she leans into it, I put a little bit more. You know what I mean? It's like um, but I, I do. I think I do think that you guys um you know, out of necessity and 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 pure abundance, and and just the fact that you are talking about it, and the do, the fact that you, I think it's very interesting that you guys all, whatever you're doing, you agree on what's gonna happen before it happens. Oh, always. Which totally yeah. is not yeah. how how my sex in in you know on, in the street level is happening. We don't we don't go listen. This is what we're gonna try this this and the <laughs> we just go in and just try everything. And when people stop you, you just stop doing the thing. Um, <laughs> So it is interesting that that the it's it's this, it is this weird place where you guys have have figured out how to get to the next level uh, of sex. Like you're you're on like you're on like the like the you know like you're like the fatality like you're like putting fatalities into into Mortal Kombat. And you're like putting all the codes in because you figured it out. Whereas we're the rest of us we're just punching, just, just punching and kicking. <laughs> I'm hitting, going straight to I'm hitting B. Like I'm jumping and I'm hitting B. Yeah. <laughs> You guys have figured it out. So now do you guys um, so the communication aspect, I think I think that was the aspect that I was trying to apply to my relationship that I was calling an open relationship, which was we had we had some ability to be able to be with other people. Are you guys in that position? Are you guys just with each other? Are you with other people? How does that part work? Uh, We well, I'm bisexual. And so um, if we're going to be with another person, it's together. Yeah, we'll be in female strictly yep. female for us and that's what we've agreed on that's what we're comfortable with that yeah that just works for us so good yeah not but never apart like yeah i was just gonna say and that did come from like hit and miss i mean we've had um company of another couple yeah and actually we did that two or two three times, times. yeah and just wasn't our just thing. wasn't great yeah yeah it was fun to try. I mean, you have to try everything yeah. once, right? Well, yeah. Maybe not everything. Oh. But. Yeah, try it twice. <laughs> <laughs> twice. Yeah, three, three times. Yeah, like listen, the first two times were kind of rough, but you know what? <laughs> they say the third time is the charm. So that's so that's just it. so. What do you guys do? How do you guys maintain sanity? Uh, because you do travel, I find like l- just the littlest things. If I if I can be in the Northeast and there's Dunkin' Donuts, I'm going to the Dunkin' Donuts just because it might not be a great product, but there's something it's consistent and that just even that little bit that I'm waking up and doing crazy stuff. I'm all over the place. I'm traveling, but just that little consistent thing keeps me from like going nuts. How do you guys find like 
some consistency in 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 this kind of life and travel and all of that. Weed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing you guys said to me. When you got here. You're like, oh, if we drove, we could have brought our own weed. <laughs> constant also in our life yeah the, the go down to the basement every day and gardening yeah uh, no shit babies and, and sampling all of our shit yeah. so can, so can we tell people where you live you live in the state of michigan yep. uh what so where is michigan in the spectrum of getting to legal weed well right now we're at medical marijuana. okay i didn't know that okay yeah, yep. we're medical marijuana. so if you are a Patient, you can either grow your own plants or oh, you become a caregiver and um, grow for what is it, six people, five people? Five people. Wow, five okay. People in yourself. yourself. So, so six. interesting. So, are you guys, are you guys either of those things? Yes, yeah. we are. Well, I guess I'm the caregiver because the laws are weird that you have to have it in separate rooms and sure. you're different people. So, we just put everybody in my name. Yeah. So, we can, so we have our rooms. So you're a caregiver, and then... He's my patient. <laughs> yeah? What do you have now? Because that was the big thing, right, in California, was that uh, you can have these 12 different symptoms, and then they'll lump them into whatever. But it was kind of bullshit, right, when they first when they first passed the medical marijuana. You could, just, you could get your medical marijuana card in... Uh, in California, if you just if you like said these hot words to the yeah. doctor, right? Oh, I got chronic pain. Yep. That's so that so that so one. okay so that's so you just say chronic pain and you're good. Pretty much. Interesting. Interesting. And there's a, like a doctor comes in and he's a legit doctor, but he does that on the side normally. Yeah. Like most um, dispensaries actually. It's probably pretty lucrative. Oh, I'm <laughs> positive about that. Yeah, he gets um, like a hundred dollars per person. Oh, that's great. And yeah, every like time we've gone, do anything, like yeah. 50 uh, right? People. Yeah, it's good. it's like uh, it's <laughs> like it's the next step after a chiropractor for doing very little and getting paid a lot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like having very uh, very few actual tasks. Like just lay on the table and just lean on them. Yeah, that's fifty five dollars. <laughs> Damn it! I um, laid off the edge of my bed to mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> <laughs> or just call one of you guys and they got strapped up in one of these things. <laughs> it's just pull. You just run in that direction while I'm wearing the dog collar. I think he'll pop my neck back into place um the other that might cost more i don't know i don't know the, i don't know i don't know the going rate for that I, I saw that they were doing that they were they were spanking people at the convention they uh yeah. they had all kinds of racks and, and and setups and stuff oh yeah the bdsm experience is all yeah that on the back corner. yeah that cool. so that is an interesting different thing because that because then it, then the public thing uh you know that then that plays into it too because it's like because now it is it's public humiliation uh, as opposed to this just being a thing that you enjoy on your own. So I thought, I don't know, all of those things, even even as a person who gets in front of hundreds of people, I, I find all of those things interesting. It, it, I, my sexuality, the things that I get off to, are, is very private to me. It's very personal to me. And it's not it's not a thing that, I, that I'm openly sharing with people. So it, it is interesting to see... You know, people having it on display. I think it's you know, there's a there's a freeness to that that I think a lot of us are, especially in this country, are missing. <laughs> um, it was weird to me now. So when we first started, you know, first got together. I mean, you know, like I said, I was 18, mm -hmm. and like we would go anywhere and have sex. I mean, we had sex in a cemetery and a yeah. porta potty, like just anywhere. Now that I'm getting older. Maybe I don't know because I have a house and have more to lose. I like I'm more <laughs> nervous about it. Sure, like, sure. Eh, I don't want to get caught and go to jail. Well, we all go through phases, right? And and it, and it, it is that that experience and the the what's what it's like. What's exciting about it is great, and and you kind of want to get caught. You don't want to get caught, but you kind of want to get caught. <laughs> like that's the whole that's the whole experience. I went through that phase. There was there was one period of time where probably eight months. Uh, me and this this girl. She, it, it didn't it didn't help that she was like kind of. She was like a, she was like was a little crazy and she was like a, she, like we had this this sort of like stalkery kind of relationship. <laughs> so it like part of it was like I don't want her to know where I live. <laughs> so we have to have sex on the you know in in the in the bay of the of the Eckerd. Um, and part of it was like this is also exciting. So we would meet for lunch, and we would just like go uh, like in New York City, Manhattan, busy restaurant lunch, and then we would just go into the restroom during lunch. And fuck, and it was. I mean, it was good. We got up. We got up uh, at a, you know. You know what hibachi is. Yep. And you, so it's just twenty five people sitting around the table. We got up at hibachi once together. Went to the went to the restroom. We just needed. We need. We would like. We would vet the restaurant before to make sure it was like a solo restroom. 
And then, because uh, you can't, you obviously can't do that in the. In the <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you can, but you, we weren't, we were not on that level. It was hibachi. So I think that that was our best score. Was we got up in hibachi, did the thing, and then came back, just sort of, you know, befuddled and sweaty, and you know, there was like something fun about like having, you know, them. Pretty sure that that they knew what happened, but not, but not know for sh you know, not not be exact. Or think I'm not having what he's having. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um. So that so that's interesting. So you're you. So maybe it's just the phase. You're out of the phase. You're out of the phase of the outdoor thing. So next, so it's you're on to the next phase. That that that's good. <laughs> or maybe after this conversation, you're gonna you're gonna overthink it, and you're gonna be like, we should have sex in public right. again. See, <laughs> like this is how this is how this is how people's minds work. It's a weird thing. Actually, though, one thing. Um, so we went to Europe two years ago, mm -hmm. and we were staying in hostels, mm -hmm. but we weren't getting individual rooms. You know, we we traveled for twenty four days, so we needed to budget real yeah. well. Yeah. So you're in the you're in the giant bunk beddy rooms. Right. Yeah. So we're walking around Berlin at night, and we just decided to fuck in the middle of this park. Like, yeah. People were like coming with their like flashlight headlights, like, and they were like, like busy. Yeah. And was, <laughs> Right when we got started, there was just bikers everywhere. And we're All like, now, going down the trails next to us. Do people mind their business as a general rule? I mean, nobody, I don't think anyone saw us. They didn't point and laugh or anything. <laughs> well, that's not the, yeah, that's definitely not the reaction you're going for. I don't, I, mean, I don't think. I don't know where we were at, but I mean, we could see them just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you think nobody saw you. But there might have been a couple people that were like, just maybe I saw it, maybe I didn't see it, but I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> that, who was telling me? Somebody, I met somebody recently who said they used to work at a movie theater and they said they used to see all kinds of crazy shit. And I was like, well, aren't, aren't you supposed to stop the people? Like, and, and he's, he's like, dude, I was 17. I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to tell these people. He's like, I wasn't even having sex. I'm not going to tell these people they can't have sex in the movie theater, you know, just because it's just because it's my job. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it, that is an interesting thing. It's like, there, I don't know, there's something about having the upper hand, like uh, from a from a confidence standpoint that, that makes other people not sometimes tell you to, to not do the thing. Right. They say, like, you can just have confidence and just like walk like like yesterday. I just kind of like I just kind of walked into the to the to the thing. I didn't really like stop and like let him check all my badges I walked in <laughs> like I was supposed to be there. And so it kind of worked. And like one time uh, I was I was my brother. I, OK, so I'm, I'm, I'm in a I'm at this is a this should be a way shorter story, but um, <laughs> I'm at, we're, it's a family gathering, we're at this restaurant, I have to go number two. And I go into the restroom and there's no locking door on oh, that no. door. <laughs> so I go and recruit my brother and I go, hey listen, I need you to just guard the door. Um, and he's like, absolutely not, I'm not doing that. And I was like, fuck, um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> right. So I was like, all right. And it was like it was one of these things where like the door was over there. So there was not there was not even like a way I could like in right. in trying to block. I would have shown more. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go do this. I don't have any other choice. Someone's going to walk in and I'm OK with that. So I'm like just playing on my phone <laughs> and I'm doing my business. And a guy walks in. I don't even look up and I just go. Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> and he took the embarrassment. He was like, oh, God, I'm so I'm so sorry. And he closes the door. I should have been embarrassed. Right. He's walking in on me. But he ends up taking the embarrassment. So maybe I think you guys can own that a little bit. You guys are like, excuse me, we're having <laughs> sex here. And then the oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize the park was was uh, was was that public of a space. <laughs> We own this block. Who do you <laughs> think you are? <laughs> Go. Yeah, that's funny. That could work. That could work in your favor. <laughs> so what else? So do you do so you don't so you don't try because this is your first conference, you're not you're not like constantly on the road with this stuff. Uh not constantly, but we were just in LA for the slut walk uh last month. Okay. Well now what what was the Okay, very cool. Okay. Yep, we went with Cam Floor for that. So was there was there a whole bunch of events? It was all outdoor stuff. It was all a bunch of events. Was it similar to this? Um, it was outdoors. Yep, there was a main stage. Um, there was a bunch of performers. Um, there was anything from like uh spoken word on um music. Yeah. Dancing, and then there was a bunch of vendors. Okay. As well, but first uh we did the walk, and then we went to the nice. Like Nice. Show, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah, I wonder. I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm trying to understand the bounds. So, as trying to be part of this industry, I want to. I want to figure out all the places that I can try to perform. And it seems like at some of the board shows, there are there they have comedians on, and they do like you know they'll do bits and stuff like that. So I'm trying to find out where these things are. But it, it is interesting because it's like a. It, it doesn't seem like an event where your mind goes straight to like like oh well, this should we should totally have spoken more poets here. Like it, it doesn't <laughs> seem like. Yeah, no. But um, but yeah, since because yeah, because last what were the events last night? They had a bunch of they had a bunch of like stripperish events on the stage yesterday at, at Exotica where they'd have like um, what did they have? They had like uh, it's not uh, it's not a booty shaking contest. What do they call it now? Yeah. They call it tour contest. Twerk. Thank you. <laughs> we need the youngins for this. I'm not yeah, I can't. <laughs> I'm still yeah, I'm still thinking a rump shaker. And then uh, they've they've just it's the same thing. They've just changed what they call it. Kylie Kylie and the and the girls have changed what they call it now. So it's twerking. <laughs> Um, so there was a bunch of like twerk level events yesterday that seemed that seemed pretty much in line. But I do I do I do look at the, and then there was a couple random like singers. There was like all these sort of like um, I don't know. It seemed like everybody was doing some version of someone else's songs uh, last night. So it would be interesting, I guess, probably to have. I, yeah, I don't know what a spoken word poet would would uh, would talk about in in this case. I guess. They could tie it into the slut walk because they're like, oh, it's it's about human rights and it's right. about, yeah. and yeah. then and then as soon as it's about human rights and you can spin it into race rights and then you can spin it into feminism, you can spin yeah. it into all of these yeah. things, right? So then so then yeah, it's like women, you know, spoken. <laughs> that's my best rendition of uh, spoken word. <laughs> Woman, whoa, man. Uh, that's from that. Did you guys ever see? So I married an axe murderer with Mike Myers. No, uh, I haven't. It was. It was a it was a very very small movie, very fun movie, and and he was a spoken word poet, and the the, the movie starts with him doing the spoken word poet, ends with him doing the spoken word poem, and and the opening he goes woman, whoa man, and he's got like a and he's got like a a guy like playing like a um. I don't know what you call it, but it's like a guitar, but it's also a keyboard. And then he's got a guy playing like, a, um, like a, like I think a trumpet in the back. It, it's it's really it's really hysterical. <laughs> it's really hysterical, actually. Um, so what else? So what are what are, where are you guys on the internet? Where can people find you? How do they follow you? How do you want them to uh, to find your content? All of that stuff. So on Twitter, Instagram. Tumblr and Snapchat, it's Freak Seven Seven Show. Okay. And then um, we do live camp shows at camp4.com slash Freak Seven underscore Seven Show. Okay. And we're also on Manny Vids. Man freak Seven okay. underscore Seven Show. <laughs> yeah. What's the so? What are the sevens for you guys? Um, we made our first profile freak show and then forgot the password. Hilarious. <laughs> and, um, this is a great story. I thought I thought it was going to be like, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, yeah, I just like seven. So yeah. I'm like, eh, fuck it. Let's Sevens. do seven underscore seven. <laughs> and then it just turns out I was able to do everything with the seven seven. Yeah. And then now Beyonce has that seven twice, seven twice. I don't know. No, I'm not. So, Again, this is what you're here for. <laughs> yeah. The two old men. We don't know anything about. We don't know that Beyonce was just a little Kim for Halloween. We don't have all the information. <laughs> uh, we need you for this. Twerking and Beyonce. This is what you're here for. <laughs> That's so funny. So, wait, so what is she doing? This is in her song? Yeah, she says seven twice, seven twice. I'm pretty sure she's playing like craps or something <laughs> okay. like that. You know, One of the games. Dice. One of the games what where the sevens matter. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> just rolling dice, you know? <laughs> she's just be, she'd be rolling. You know how Beyonce be rolling <laughs> dice, guys? <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> okay, so that's cool. Uh, and it, yeah, it, it's, it's always nice to find that consistency. I find that people, both in my industry and yours, sometimes they'll they'll like they'll just fuck up and they're like, they don't get their name. They just don't get their name on their thing. And you're like, how is anybody ever gonna find you? Like I was I was a, a little side business for a little while for me as a comedian was trying to help other comedians by making the business cards. And I'm like, what's your email? What's your Instagram? Whatever. And it's like they'll have a different Instagram, a different Tumblr, a different Twitter, a different oh, thing. And no. I was like, you're nobody's ever gonna find you. <laughs> I don't even I shouldn't even make this card. This is a waste of my time. Um, so it it is good when you're able to you know get all of the stuff. Yeah, because like for our business card, we haven't printed them yet, but yeah. we I laid something out and uh, I just put the pictures of the logos yeah. for social media yeah. and then just all across just the, one, the yeah. back, I just put Freak 777. Yeah, oh, boom, like, done. Easy. Yeah, so <laughs> much easier. Yeah, and to that's be something too that ended up being nice about the sevens is because we are a freak show. Yeah. And freak 
show has been a meme forever. Yeah, right. It's like a, it's a, yeah, it's a normal lexicon. So you just right. Google freak show. And you're probably gonna get the TV. You get the thing. You get the TV show. You get the Coney Island thing. Right. You get all that kind of deal. Oh, you put a seven in there. You get us. Boom! First one. <laughs> first hit. That's great. Optimize that shit. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I'm just so I, you know, I was perusing. I was perusing on, on your on your social media, and you have the you have the the uh, the ringmaster uniform for one of the photos. Yeah. Right. Which I thought was great. This is like I was trying to uh, I was trying to basically do this. This is this is what I was trying to do for for Halloween actually. It was, I, I made my dog a lion, so I was trying to decide: okay. <laughs> do I uh, do I be a ringmaster or do I be like um, Siegfried and Roy? Except I, it's just gonna be me. So it's like. Right. <laughs> I, 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 a couple years now, like an idiot, I've been one half of what would make a perfect p- couple's costume, but I'm only half. So then, like, we don't know what you are, and I'm like, no, but like, if dude, if if Hall was here, you would totally get that this was Hall and Oates, dude. So it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird. Did you guys, did you guys do Halloween? That was like right now. That was five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah we yeah. did. What'd you guys? That's my Christmas. I yeah. Decorated my whole house. No I shit. Had about three hundred cockroaches on the wall. <laughs> okay. Um. But uh, we were mummies this year. Oh, very cool. How how in depth? What was the what was the like uh, the wrap made out of? Uh, cheesecloth. We bought okay. it and dyed it with tea and coffee. Wow, you so went we in. Cut it in strips and glue it. Oh, and that's great. And sew it, and then for Halloween day, I actually did fingernails as my teeth. Okay. So it looked like you know the flesh was. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was, oh wow. That was legit. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Oh wow! Whatever, so. so wait, did you guys have to rewrap? Did you guys go to a couple events? You had to rewrap every time, or did you make it so you could just like slip into it? Yeah, yeah. we sewed it on no um, shit. material. Like, oh, that's really yeah, cool. Made it way easier because yeah. that would have been a pain. Plus, right. I've done stuff like that before, just with like ribbon, and it ends up like falling down. Right. So right. Oh, you that's don't brilliant. Have to glue it to yourself. So yeah. Not that I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Depending on how well, it depends on how big the event is and how many you have to go to, whether you want to glue that shit to yourself. That's really what it comes down. To. If you got one event, you go and you go big. Yeah, you glue that shit, <laughs> and then you and then you just go lay in, you know, fucking uh, I don't know, uh, nail polish remover yeah. at the end of the night if you have to. Luckily, uh, it was our house. We did a house party. Oh, that's so awesome. That was nice. Yeah, those are my favorite. I don't. I that's the that's the thing I miss and the thing that I don't get living in New York City is that basically people just don't invite you to their house. Um, cause, cause, cause you, everybody lives in an apartment. He's got a roommate. It's like you'll be forty years old and you still got a roommate. It's just like it's just what life is, cause, uh, cause no matter how well you're doing, you you still want to live in the nicest thing you can. So, you, so it's like you know the guys are making hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars. They're still spending all of that money. This, New York City is a crazy place. You know what I mean? In Michigan or Wyoming or you know Missouri. You know, you you uh you just get a house and you live your life and you do the you do the separate thing. You grow weed in your basement <laughs> and um and you put a pretty good life together. Well, that's like we bought a carton of cigarettes to come here because we weren't yeah. gonna spend the price. Yeah, oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. And so wait, so what? So you did you end up did you end up uh, getting your hands on some weed in in New Jersey in Edison, New Jersey? <laughs> Okay, and you were you and just because it was not the same experience of going downstairs, picking it, doing the thing, uh, or it literally quality wise was not even on the level. Like, what was the? I was actually pleasantly surprised, <laughs> yeah. but it, because it reminds us of, of some of the, I'd say lower scale dispensary, dispensary weed from okay. where we are. Okay, interesting. Because I just don't trim it good enough. Yeah. Okay. Like, we're just. We're just fancy now. Yeah. <laughs> well, now the quality of weed has has grown uh, tremendously in my lifetime. Uh, it, you know, it really is to the point where you, you got to have some information before you just you just like get in on the circle. You know what I mean? Like you'll 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 take a hit on some shit that you don't you're out like that's not your pay grade. You need to like you figure out your life. I uh, comedians uh, notoriously have good weed. And I, I, uh, I had an experience in New York City where. I, I got in the circle and I and I took a hit and I immediately knew I was fucking uh, this is not you know this is not the the level that I should be at and I ended up going to Shake Shack, which is um, the in, the you know the In and Out Burger of New York City for the most part and I ate a burger that like brought back repressed memories of my mother you know what I mean <laughs> making me burgers as a child like this is like this is how fucked up I was 
Um, so you gotta be you gotta be careful out there, kids. That's the point of that. Oh, uh-huh. for sure. I've made edibles myself. I make butter too, yeah. just with trim. Yeah. And this one time, I made these what I call bonbons. You put a Hershey kiss inside like a cookie like dough. Yeah. But the dough is like chocolate chips and flour. Okay. Okay. So then I baked them right. If this is nine thirty in the morning. I take them out of the oven. And I eat one. You just got to sample. <laughs> right. The cookie is like, what, a 50 cent piece? Right. That's right. right. Okay. The, ha- the, half, do- the half dollar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's hey, not a lot. Of, listen, there's not a lot of people that, that both have the reference point to know about a half dollar and about twerking. So, I listen, this is this is a lot of knowledge on this couch right the now. The tooth fairy used to bring me half dollar. <laughs> me too. What did you get? <laughs> You get full dollars? Oh, shit. I didn't realize you are coming from a rich family over here. My first tooth, I, <laughs> <laughs> my first tooth, I got a $2 bill. No shit. And yeah. then 50 cents. Yeah, I, have a, that's, I basically have a bank of $2 bills and 50 cent pieces. <laughs> we, have, we basically have the same childhood. That's funny. Um, okay. so, so sorry. So you take, to, you take this hit. Yo, I eat this cookie, and I know I'm not very good at edibles, meaning I can't handle them very <laughs> okay. well. But I'm like, oh, this cookie is small. I'll be fine. About an hour later, I thought that I ate and ate the mushroom. <laughs> like, I was to that point before you see visuals. Right, right. And, like, the colors were brighter. <laughs> All the and guys then- <laughs> from the, the Beavis and Butthead movie are coming out of the ceiling. <laughs> and then, like, then I just got paranoid. It was awful. It yeah. wasn't until 6 p.m. where I'm finally like, okay, I should probably smoke a joint. And I'm... I'm like super high still, but I'm not paranoid anymore. I'm not tripping balls. Yeah. So yeah, be careful out Come there. Down this. Yeah, it is tough. I, I'm very, I'm very paranoid at, in general. So then my paranoia about taking drugs that are not gonna stop <laughs> is like even higher. So then I'm like paranoid about being in the thing and then being more paranoid. Right. Like so, I, so I, I generally just don't get involved. But I, I recently. I recently did mushrooms with with a good friend of mine, um, and uh, and ba- there was a couple times where where basically I had to sit on the floor and just be like, "Look, this is gonna stop eventually." <laughs> like these are like just just like I was like started heading the wrong direction, but I I did find that the visual aspect of it was kind of fun. Um, we just kind of like knocks me out. Uh, honestly, I, I am. I'm afraid. I'm so afraid of edibles that this woman gave me this. She gave me this little gummy like it was probably it was the size of, of probably a nickel. And it was uh, <laughs> as long as we're using currency as, as the thing. and it was, uh, you know, it was thick, but it was uh, it was a square. And um, I was so afraid of it that I took like I took like little shavings off of it. Like Same every year. Yeah, like every day. Yeah, like just the corner, just like every day for like five days. And then at the end of it, I was like, I, I realized I never got any, I never got high at all. So it was like the whole, that was just a waste. Like the whole thing was a waste. I should have just popped it and figured out what happened. Uh, though, I don't blame you because I had the like normal size gummy bear. Yeah. Like almost, yeah, I'd say normal size. I only ate three gummy bears yeah. one time and I was like, damn, like, there's <laughs> somebody who doesn't eat animals. I definitely bit the head off of a uh, off of a uh, a worm once and got f- and got really fucked up. But, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I don't know. I still don't know what my tolerance is for for edibles. There's a couple things that have carried over from from my you know from from heredity. So my parents, my mom, uh, notoriously can't be put under for anesthesia. Oh wow. Uh, like she might not come out of it. I just had surgery and I came in and out of it really easily. But uh, on the same level, I think she has like a really shitty tolerance for for alcohol, and I would assume. Everything else, so I would assume right. weed. I don't know, prob- maybe coke. I don't want to think about my mom doing <laughs> coke, but um, so I think I think I got her. I think I got her stamina for things like that. Like I'm not a good drinker. I'm not a good smoker. I'm not. I pretty much sober is where. Like this is me sober. So this is like this is enough. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. I don't need it. You know, I'm paranoid. I'm already too paranoid and like too hyped at the same time. You know what I mean? Right. It's like I, I come off like a dude who does cocaine, who, even though I don't. You know, it's like it's like. I'm just in that I'm I'm in that good zone. Nobody looks at me and goes, "We should give that guy cocaine." And that's <laughs> never happened. He's got enough. He, yeah, he's like that guy's already been doing it. Yeah, if I dude, if I get a uh, if I get a cold, if I get the sniffles, I can't even go in public because people are like, "This fucking guy's got a problem." <laughs> I'm like, I know, but it's it's uh, I need a uh, uh, what's it called the uh, nafrin or whatever. I don't <laughs> I don't need cocaine. I need nafrin. Is that is that a real word? That's the thing, right? The the in your nose to. Am I making that up? 
Anyway. I mean, it sounds legit. Though. Right? Yeah. So either way, it's good. If oh, it's yeah, not nafrin. Oh yeah. It is nafrin. I'd be oh. I'd be just snorting all this nafrin, bro. <laughs> Anyway, um, well, you guys are awesome. Thank you for for having me on my episode with you. This is kind of feels it feels good. Uh, is this is freak show? Um, do I run it one more time. So it's freak show seven underscore seven. Freak seven. Freak underscore seven. Freak show. seven underscore seven show for most of the stuff. Well, freak seven seven show for social media. How about freak that? seven seven show for social media. Uh, so check them out. Follow them. Check out their content. I found this out recently. Uh, almost 40 episodes into the podcast that most of the places where I access my porn, uh, nobody's getting paid for it. So guys, pay for your <laughs> porn. Um, you know, it, it, it really, that's, if you're a fan, if you're enjoying any of this, like this is this is their livelihood. So uh, if you didn't pay for your porn, chances are they didn't get paid for uh, for what you're seeing. So um, just keep that in mind when you when you enjoy your, your, your situations. Um, this is the Porn Sister People podcast. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. Uh, this episode uh, has a very fun couch episode on YouTube. Check that out. Wherever you found us, we're on the other thing also. So check those out when you're traveling, whatever else you're doing. We're going to try to keep giving you good content everywhere, everywhere we can. Uh, do you guys want to go out? Do you guys want to give us like a hot word to go out on? Follow me on Snapchat so you can <laughs> see my daily dumps. <laughs> You t- do, you, do you take do you take the Snapchat dumps every day? Oh, that's dude, one of my favorite things it's so show. funny. That's yeah. That that, that real girl. that's so. I think this is the when I think every dude that's when Snapchat first came out. I think every dude went on there thinking that it was just going to be like all day long just getting titties, and all it was for every dude was they were sending each other pictures of their dumps. That's what it was for the first <laughs> year of Snapchat. Oh, I don't show my poo. I just no, show I'm not saying I'm not toilet. saying you do, but dudes are <laughs> dudes are terrible people. So we were like competing. I had like all my friends we were competing on who who had the the rankest poo. I mean, longest, if people let me, I'd probably send that. But it's like, I gotta make money here. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to cross the line. Like once you cross that line too far, they're just like, "Oh no, it's over now." It's, <laughs> I can't get that image out of my head. Just like that guy, like that guy that walked in on me in the in the stall. He's going to remember my face forever. That's going to be his last vision <laughs> before he dies. <laughs> right? Oh, and and or when he takes DMT apparently. When he takes DMT apparently your whole life flashes before your eyes. So he takes he can't take DMT cuz he's just me shitting. Like that's all he sees. <laughs> all right, uh, it was very fun. Thank you guys for listening. Uh Please, please keep uh, following us. Appreciate you.